Hey everybody, it's time for the future of photography once again. And uh, well, my name's Adrian. Whole team is here with us this week and looking forward to discussing with you uh, what we variously called before we hit the big red record button as quite a rabbit hole, <laughs> something really scary. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes but uh well let's go around the table and say hi jeremiah how you doing uh covid fine and just ensconced in my bubble as you can see yeah for those who watch the video this is we're all bubbles now <laughs> all bubbles and it, yes ema's in her bubble how you doing all good here yeah trying my best to climb out of the rabbit hole that you sent me down <laughs> good otherwise <laughs> And last but not least, Chris, how you doing? I'm doing just fine. After making all these bubbles, I'm having uh, <laughs> I'm having tons of fun doing this. And uh, Adrian, last but not least, how about you? Well, do you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm quite good, actually. I'm quite good, thank you. Uh, managed to actually get out of the house and go see some family I haven't seen in months at the weekend. That's good. And that was fun. Yeah, it's nice to be able to see people face to face. But it's uh, still, still some challenges here, but uh, yeah. For now, we're allowed out. <laughs> yeah. Long may it last. And long may it last. Absolutely. Yes, yes. So, um, well, I suppose having teased it a little bit, I should talk about this rabbit hole, should I? Um, Can we go, dive straight in? Dive go straight ahead. down the rabbit hole? <laughs> okay, so this is uh, actually been prompted by an article I saw. Um, an article about some technology, but actually it quite quite worried me um in a way um or at least it worried the cynic in me anyway or the the tin foil hat person in in uh, in in me because it relates to something that could be if if misused uh quite a breach of of privacy um it, it may not be the first time this has ever happened but it certainly is is ready for mass production and i am referring to uh the the technology that's emerging right now for the front facing cameras that on our all our devices to be buried underneath the main screen so that you don't even really uh, see that they're there or aware that they're there and uh, quite why this has popped up just now um, is that I saw uh, an article. Uh, actually, I saw it first on dpreview.com uh, and it's about a company called Visionox. Uh, there's a link in the show notes. Uh, but basically what it says is that Visionox uh, is now ready to mass produce cameras that work under the display of your device. Whoops. Um, all hidden away and not visible to the user. That's scary. Uh, well, is it so? So that's the conversation I wanted to have today, mm. actually, because I'm thinking to myself, well, actually, uh, you know, forget about the technology itself. Not interested in that conversation particularly, unless anybody has you know something that I haven't thought of. But uh, what does this mean for the future of photography? What does it mean for the future of our privacy? Yeah, you know, so you know, right now as we record this, there are some countries that don't trust other countries to build their five G infrastructure. Uh, and there are some applications uh, that we use or that some of us use are on our devices that are considered to be insecure and, and essentially um, sort of uh, vaguely disguised, barely disguised uh, data mining ap applications. And that 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 is potentially worrying if suddenly all the cameras you're going to forget about the cameras being there because you're not going to be able to see them there's no going to be no no well i have quite an old phone at the moment so i don't have a notch in my phone i just have a big black bar across the top where the camera is but if there's nothing on your phone that suggests that the camera might be looking at you how might that impact our behavior is this a generational thing is it because uh, i personally uh, grew up without a telephone um uh, oh, mobile phone that is <laughs> hmm. and and you know you know uh, without computers everywhere so is it something that my generation would be aware of but that the younger generations wouldn't care about do they care about privacy um how do we feel that we are four individuals making this podcast how do we all feel about it so um yeah that's the conversation i want to have today am i being a, a bit of a drama queen here or am i uh you know uh, sh should i should i be reaching for my tin foil hat because it's all <laughs> legit <laughs> <laughs> you know is what? it, think, is it something that that we should be surprised of, uh, about mm. that is i think the first question i would ask is it something you know, that i thought it was kind of scary until i went to investigate further and realized that 
does it really matter because the level of surveillance that's already on us all through our mobile devices is already massive and we kind of willingly feed into it all the time i think we could go i i think we could go from what you're you're saying extrapolating on that um is from the specific which is cameras that are hidden that are processing information to what duplicity we have no idea Mm. but uh about a decade ago i i had met with some people who had developed some technology that would work in billboards Build electronic billboards. Uh, the uh, cameras are hidden within or behind the billboards, and they photograph uh, the license plate, process the area code, zip code, or areas that the license plates are registered in, could uh, basically um, ascribe a demographic to that and create advertising either on radio or actually on the visual that transformed for the individual cars that were moving fast and they were working on that so that's an application that you know uh, you could kind of reduce to a phone the other thing that we really need to discuss which Imar really presented um, is is privacy a myth um, have we already given it up? Um, you know, our credit cards, um, if we use them, of course, um, track us and every purchase we make. Uh, our mobile phones, our radio transmitters, and track us everywhere we go. Our apps on phones, uh, whether it's TikTok or just Amazon, when we buy something, are accumulating data and profiles on us. Uh, Alexa is listening to us. Siri is listening to us. Oh, you don't, um, you, you don't even have to go. You don't even have to go that far because um, your ISP already knows everything about you. Even precisely. even that step, they have all the information: what sites you visit, all the metadata that you uh, accumulate. Exactly. Um, exactly. They they have yeah. that. Yes. And so so when you start to kind of say, oh, I want privacy, um, I think that if you cut yourself off from every possible way of being tracked electronically, um, you become another a reverse target. What is he hiding? What is she hiding? Why are they not participating in the normal culture? So so even trying to kind of pull away from it often will create problems. So so maybe it's hiding in in um in kind of plain sight in in ma- you know the best place crowd uh, crowds are the best place to disappear in. But um I mean this this week we have spy planes in some of the cities that are roaming. Of course they say oh, we're doing nothing but flying around, but what are they picking up? Satellite imagery. Uh, all of this stuff is is globalizing, and uh, whether it's being used for commercial or political purposes, um, probably both. We don't, you know, we don't really. Um, I don't think we've really come to terms with it for the convenience that we've allowed into our life. Mm, that's that's it, isn't it? Yeah. Let me let me try to bring this uh, back to photography because because we had something um, similar going on. It wasn't billboards, but it was um, cameras, hidden cameras built into like you know these TVs in shops. They have ab- above the the checkout, mm-hmm. so when you wait in line, you you're being entertained, you're being advertised to, and they had uh, cameras in those that were virtually invisible that ended up. Um, doing mood analysis. They checked, first of all, if you were actively watching, and then they would check your facial expression, if you were relaxed about it, if you were enjoying it, if you were frowning, these kind of things. Um, They were tracking gender, they were tracking the average age, and you can do this to plus minus 10 years, I think. Um, uh, Now, being in Germany, uh, which is a very, very privacy-focused uh, country, that was found out and um, there was the biggest the biggest uh, uproar about uh, it. And it, it was pretty much, I think it's not, well, I, I, think, I think nowadays, that was before GDPR, before our data protection laws, um, I think it was 
Um, it wouldn't be possible to do that today, but before that, it uh, caused a major uproar. Maybe they just have to hide the cameras more effectively. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's happening. Maybe that's happening. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's interesting. Isn't it? I mean, I mentioned I got out a bit at the weekend and I went to visit my sister who lives in London. And uh, to do that, because it's a bit quieter on the streets at the moment, I actually drove up uh, and driving around London for the first time, probably in several years, actually. Uh, that I noticed there's a lot of signs now that say police ANPR every few hundred yards. ANPR mm. stands for automatic number plate recognition. Mm. A number plate being what here in the UK we call a license mm. plate everywhere else. Um, so, you know, I mean, I think in a lot of ways in the UK, um, we've traded our uh, our privacy for security. Uh, especially mm. in the big cities, uh, but the uh, yeah you know, the these uh, automatic systems are used to to pay for parking. Um, you know it it's it, it, they're they're very very common now. You know that mm. that wherever you go, the, the the way you get into the car park is that it reads your registration plate, and then you know you type in your registration plate when you go to pay, and it lets you out because it reads your plate and it says that yes, okay, you've you've paid, so you're allowed out. Um, and they're all over the place here. Mm. Um, I mean, and, and of course, you know, we, we, as we all know, London is famous for the amount of closed circuit television it has and you know, and surveillance. Um, nobody that lives in London or goes to London regularly, no, nobody ever thinks about it, to be honest. It's just, just mm -hmm. part of life. Um, uh, and a lot of it is it's interesting because it, it's. Is it for a nefarious purpose? Well, it depends on if you trust your government or not, doesn't it? But but primarily, the especially in in big cities in the UK, uh, the the surveillance is for security purposes. Keep everybody safe. Do you think that they're going to apply um, temperature uh, readings to those cameras soon, so that anyone who has a fever who's moving mm. freely in the population can be and identified and Hold off the and, and mask that detection actually sound like a bad <laughs> idea to me. <laughs> mask <laughs> detection. <laughs> well, <sighs> you know, like I said, um, the the uses of these cameras, uh, and we're talking about the dark uses of the cameras, uh, as Apple is experimenting with their new glasses and going to start manufacturing them soon. The question of cameras in those glasses has become. Um, a contentious issue because if you can walk around with with uh, glasses that are cameras taking pictures wherever you go um, and you couple that with face recognition which we know doesn't work that effectively and yet creates a lot of kind of whatever false positives or false negatives um, I, I, I think that that we are definitely approaching unknown territory. But going back to the first question that I asked is, is privacy a myth? And um, I think we've discussed this topic before when we talked about CCTV. And once you get into 8K cameras or beyond and are able to stitch effectively the world together and and kind of go back in time and zoom in and have really, really um, high dynamic range and, and very, very sharp focus. The kind of imagery uh, outside in public is going to be complete for those who need to process it somewhat, whatever that may be. Um, and inside our, our homes, we have all of these devices, home devices, which are listening to us, our, our phones, our even our TVs can be looking at us and generating ads to us. And those ads may, you know, people may say, yes, I, I would rather have ads that are relevant to me than ads that are not relevant to me if I'm kind of using commercial television to watch. So you, it, it's that trade off. But I, I think we've entered into a world way beyond privacy right now. I think we can take that as a given, and and so the you know whilst you know I entered into the in, into this conversation with a well you know it, does it mean that this is going to happen? I think you're you're right in the broader in the broader sense. Uh, yeah, we're already got a lot of surveillance. That that I think you know though a camera that we is facing us all the time wherever we go. I think it does a couple of things differently for me. 
One is that it, it takes that level of surveillance to to um, uh, a much higher level. Now, let, you know, uh, let, let's say you know, uh, you go for a shower and your phone rings and you jump out of the shower to, to answer the phone. Personally, I'd leave it to ring. But, um, you know, the, the, a camera that is facing you all the time that you're very less aware of. You know, that, that that then creates a, a, almost a, a personal intrusion, doesn't it? The ability to take photographs of you as a, as a person, in, you know, let's just say naked for, for want of a better example or a better term. Um, and the, the other thing is, um, I, I think that it, it's about how we feel about it as well. It's mm. the part of the conversation that I want to, to, to have. I mean, you know, I mean, Chris has already given us, you know, what what we all know to be true is that the, it, Germany is a very privacy conscious nation uh, as a whole, and and I think you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but but the law in Germany reflects that culture as well. It it does it does that to a certain extent, um, or let's say the law is probably stricter than the execution because there right. there's we, we just we just had this big thing about um, the so called privacy shields, the the law that governs how how companies like Google or Amazon can can host the data of the German users in the US and do stuff with it. Um, that has been uh, deemed illegal just now, just a few days ago. Um, the question is, is, is it going to have any influence on what they're actually doing? So the, 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 how much mm -hmm. teeth, how, what, what's the amount of teeth that this these laws have? Um, mm -hmm. And yeah. I am... Um, pretty close to an organization here, is called, which is called the Chaos Com Computer Club, the CCC, which is, uh, um, well, they came out from a from a from a hacker community. Um, they have this congress once a year. This year they won't have one, but normally every year, and they have a lot of talks and discussion about privacy, about um, what is going on. They have um helped bring out a lot of these things into the lights that were kind of hidden away. So having had a bit more insight into these things by just dealing with it from a, on, on a bit of a deeper level, um, I think that a lot of things are happening that are officially not allowed and that we don't know about. I have a, qu I have a question that may turn this uh, discussion a little bit different, which is uh, access to all this information all mm -hmm. these um, images, all of these um, tracking metadata, um, yeah. all of that. If that could you imagine, and I, I'd throw this out, is there a way that this can be used for good uh, or for art? Uh, if all of this information was accessible to everyone, so we could use this for good or to kind of understand our world a little better, its patterns, a little better we can see the effect scientifically of movements of people and uh, migration all of that stuff can this be used for good sure it can i sure think that's can. the way they are trying to sell this to us this of, the data selection is, right <laughs> there's <laughs> only they don't give things. us the access there's right. there's it, it will help us get rid of terrorism it will help us get rid of child pornography that's what pretty much no. uh, these are the two the, the two main arguments right Yes, but I'm act actually asking it in, in a kind of um, honest way, in other words. And in a more scientific way, I think. That's, that's what I hear, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know the dark side of this and yes. mm. that in my personal history of, of kind of just life, uh, I think, yeah, it will be used for evil. <laughs> I have no doubt about it. Yeah. But... Um, is there a way of using the technology? You know, the let's let's just take the original inspiration for this episode, which is a camera hidden under your uh, screen. What benefits can come of that? That's a tough. That's a tougher <laughs> one for me. You know, um, I once heard this urban myth, and I'm not even sure if it's an urban myth or if it was true. And ever since, I've been very conscious of, like the way Adrian, you said that you know, you know that the camera is there, and because you see the notch, you're aware of it. But even at that, like you're still not consciously uh, planning every move you make because your phone is looking at you. But I heard some like horror stories about, like. People do cover the webcams on their MacBooks 
And I've kind of done that at times, not because I'm doing anything that I don't want anyone to see, but because it's creepy and, you know, it's that's you feel like you're being watched and like this girl had her whole life ruined. Again, I don't know if it was an urban myth, but it totally made me aware of all the cameras, all the front facing cameras on everything I have. And, and I'm and always the- aware that they're there and I think that they're watching me. So, you know. And that's that's interesting, isn't it? Because that's part of the conversation I wanted to have, because, you know, some of it, as I said, you know, I don't think we can stop the direction of travel here. I don't Mm. think we can suddenly make it so that everybody's data is erased and given back to them and it's never captured ever again. You know, there's two that that time has gone. So how does it how does it make you feel? I mean, Ema, does it does it really make you feel are are you really constantly aware of it? And is it changing your behavior in a in a in a negative way? And it because you you're you're worried about this sort of thing? Well, mm. I, I would be a little iffy about it, like if it wasn't for um, I actually had my camera covered on the Mac um, until I started doing these FaceTimes with you guys. So I had to pull the sticker off it. Well, you I've, can put I've it back on. <laughs> I've got, yeah, I've got an iPad and I, I, I've got one on that all the time. And it's just don't know if it's over paranoia, but like. Um, I wouldn't want to be taking I mean, chances. I mean, there's... And the more I've read into this stuff, <laughs> the more paranoid I, I have become because it's not something I feed into on a daily basis or spend a lot of time thinking about. But um, definitely um, I've noticed even, I've noticed cameras in more places now. Like we have CCTV even in our small little town here in certain areas because of security. And that's, you know, that's okay. but. I, I in my um, bit of research that I was doing, I watched a, pr- a program about China and from a Chinese woman's perspective and the whole idea of social credits and like constantly being watched. There's cameras like every 10 feet um, and everything they do, this facial recognition, the temperature thing, they've got your credit ratings, people who don't say something, you know, um, that might be or people that say things that might be seen to be slightly anti-government or write an article in a newspaper get blacklisted and they go to the machine and all of a sudden they can't buy a train ticket so it's very um dystopian right it really is but you know over there like the lady was quite almost convincing in her argument that oh you know that's fine by me because i'm not doing anything wrong But she also took um, the reporter through a supermarket and it was like, if you buy nappies, your points go up or, you know, diapers um, because that's a responsibility. If you buy alcohol or cigarettes, you lose some points because, oh, you know, you're codependent on something. Um, (laughs) It's called nudging. It's called nudging, right? Your your behavior is slowly being changed. I I, I think it's very easy these days to to get a bit paranoid about these things. Their life was being observed constantly Except, you know uh Emer, w- when one is making a documentary film and you kind of move into people's lives with mm. uh, a crew a sound man cameraman producer and you're you're there and you go like mm. well just you know act act normal you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> forget about us yeah, yeah. Usually what happens is, you know, for the first 24, 48, you know, three days, whatever, everyone is is, uh, acting a version of themselves. Mm. They're very, very hyper uh, conscious of the camera. But what happens slowly as you remain there and they go about their daily lives is ever so slowly, but very surely, consistently, eventually it becomes the norm. And yeah. once it becomes the norm, that's when they yeah. really do forget about the camera because mm-hmm. it just becomes part of, they can't maintain that sense of of, of self-protection in terms of presentation. Yeah. And that's when you start to get really, really good stuff. It's the same thing when you are in a situation that creates a lot of fear you can't maintain high level fear over a long period of time. Mm. It, it just it mm. it doesn't it doesn't work. When you read um, these articles about people who are really near death or on you know in a foxhole or all of that stuff, 
there are these moments of of adrenaline but but eventually it, it softens doesn't mean that they're not afraid but the adrenal reaction to it it just it becomes a lot less pronounced and so there's just an adapt you know the ways the way that humans adapt to any situation mm. so what i'm saying if you extrapolate that out into the general population with all the cameras that's what we're really seeing in london mm. people don't really pay it much mind no um, nobody cares it's, you know, it's, 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 i did think to myself at least um those people are kind of informed and okay while well, they're being sold it as it's for your security and because you know society needs to have a certain structure and things should be this way um at least it's almost more honest because I think on this side of the world, we're sort of being drip fed with little tiny bits of it. And it's just eroding bit by bit by bit. It's kind of that. Now that's an interesting thing. So that's another element. We, it's, you're choosing email in this conversation, which is I'm really <laughs> pleased about to focus on the impact of it on people and, and behavior and how, and, and you personally, I mean, Jeremiah, you've been talking more, systemically but but how do you personally feel about this stuff uh, well i like you i i grew up before this was a thing part of the cultural reality and um uh, you know i'm uncomfortable with being tracked everywhere and yet i've given up uh, as soon as i got my first credit card i i literally gave up privacy mm -hmm. and and all the way through i have you know, I uh, have all the devices <laughs> that, that generationally um, I would have. Um, it's the convenience of it, but I I don't um, I don't have any doubts that what is being recorded is being used to fundamental fundamentally sell me things. I mean, I've had situations where I've been talking with friends and then you know had mentioned something kind of obscure um you know a pillow or something you start to get advertising for pillows I, that's becoming just you know, so obvious yeah isn't it? yeah, yeah it's obvious now mm. by the way if i'm looking for a pillow and i'm being sold you know detergent ads well i, I don't want to see that but if all of a sudden i'm seeing pillow ads, well that's coincidence uh, i happen to be in the market for it i i, I I, I do think that when we bring it back to photography and we talk about street photography, let's talk about that because you're on the street with a camera. Do you think that uh, people are more aware now of being photographed by a man with a camera, a woman with a camera on the street uh, or not? Does it matter? Uh, what is the dynamic of using, say, you know, a regular 35 or two and a quarter camera on the street versus an iPhone? Everybody has an iPhone. You could be looking at your phone for your own purposes and snapping pictures. Nobody really knows. Mm. That's very, very, um, that's a sort of a different um, style than shooting with, uh, you know, a, a Nikon or a Canon you know, with a 24 on the street, just mm. semi surreptitiously, um, the kinds of images that are going to be produced by um, either nefarious or obvious ways and people's reaction on the street, something that interests me. And we should discuss that, too. Mm. I mean, interesting. We we are we are seeing a normalization of a lot of things. And as you said, this happens because with a constant barrage the constant bombardment of the same thing uh, sooner or later you just give up you just mm -hmm. stop you, you let your guard down and you stop um being bothered by it because you can't keep up being bothered by it so um i have uh, i've seen over i don't know the last 10 years maybe that um a lot of people are getting more okay with cameras being around i mean we are especially now since covid we are all much more used we had to get used to speak speak with cameras to talk into cameras to look at cameras mm -hmm. um so so this is getting more and more normalized um so the a phone with us with a camera behind the screen, a hidden camera behind the screen. As long as I know that, I don't mind. I don't care about it and anymore. Um, I think it's the situation where that is truly hidden, where I don't know about it, and then it becomes a completely different thing. That's, that's, so that's interesting, Chris. <laughs> 
So, so Chris, I mean, you you talked about, about a national cultural framework for for privacy, and you you've just you've just spoken a little bit there on a personal level. But we also know, of course, that you you are you enjoy playing with the technology, and you have Absolutely. you enjoy having deep access to the technology. So, so my slightly tongue in cheek question to you is: Are you going to go out now and buy an Android phone um, just so you can get root access and switch off the camera? <laughs> So, okay, okay, we, this this means we have to spend a couple of minutes talking about Android versus mm. Apple because we have to <laughs> in in the in the whole privacy topic. Um, and I'm not saying one is better than the other, but Apple is clearly positioning themselves um, as the more privacy focused one, as the mm. one with special chips in the hardware so that the that the webcam in the system cannot be. Uh, enabled by someone who hacks the system, that kind of stuff. Um, again, it, comforting. Uh, it is. It is uh, just Absolutely. just on a, on a deeply psychological level. It is more comforting mm. um, for me personally. Um, I still do have a sticker on my webcam. Mm. So, um, but that's that's because I spend a few days on this congress every year, and I see the talks, and I hear the the. The nerds talk about these uh, about the very low level technology uh, underneath it. So um, I'm just a little bit more cautious, I guess. But in general, this is this has become privacy has become uh, a selling point. It has it, yes, certainly for Apple, hasn't it? And even things like um, when they when they market the the Siri voice activation service they you know one of the th messages that apple put out is a lot of the processing for that is done on the device whereas for google <laughs> services it, it's all sent back to the the google cloud wait 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 apple has had their own shitstorm about that because <laughs> they also were um using people to transcribe what others had said and they got mm. into hot water about that and they had to uh, change their operating system to allow people to to turn off that sending home of things that Siri heard. So it's they are all using human labor to make this work to a certain extent. And then once they have their models there, their um, their machine learning models trained, then they will do the processing on the device. But to get to that point and to improve it over time, they need people to listen to this and transcribe it it's just the way it works and uh that was that wasn't too long ago that was probably a year ago when apple got into a bit of trouble there so mm. there <laughs> so so where do, where do we get to with all this trying to trying to summarize this i mean we've all you know, we've all got different ex experiences we all have um and and coming as as we do from four different countries um you know the 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 national and cultural experience is different as well I mean, you know, I guess, you know, it's 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 a bit flippant, flippant perhaps of me to say, well, you know, anybody that spends any time in London just stops caring about this stuff because it is different from what you know, walking along the street and and being and having cameras that are linked to the police and the security services to protect you, uh, which. Um, actually, unfortunately, is, is a necessary part of life in London uh, is. Uh, it, it's a very different thing from having a device in your home that that may or may not be spying on you. Do do I think you know? I, do, do I think that uh, I, I'm going to start you know putting stickers over the screen of my phone when I get? <laughs> well, for one thing, I won't know where the camera. Bring it, don't actually bring is. it in the shower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or bring it in the shower. No, I, I don't think. I think I'll stop taking my phone into the shower. I don't care how waterproof it is. It's like, <laughs> Buy a, buy a case. Buy a case with a little flap that you oh, can yeah. put in front of the camera. Uh, yeah. By the way, and then w when you walk in London, you'll be wearing a big fedora, sunglasses, and your mask, and so you don't have to worry about facial recognition. <laughs> that's that's true. That is, that is true. Uh, yes. But by the way, uh, ma speaking of facial recognition, unlocking your phone and masks. They don't work. Mm -hmm. No. They don't work anymore. No. So I don't have uh, a, a face recognition phone yet because i've still got an old phone where i have to it has to read my thumbprint um but lucky yeah. you <laughs> well uh, that's that's a big good question actually because i have been considering you know because my phone's getting a, a little bit long in the tooth now and uh i have been considering upgrading but one of the things that i am really worried about is the whole face recognition thing you know you don't I, have to activate it 
Mm. No, uh, no, but how do you? No, but but no thumbprint. The, then, then you t- type in your passcode all the password, time. Yeah, yeah, but a passcode yeah. that's long enough to be actually secure is a bit of a pain to put, to type in all the time, isn't it? But it's, well, now um, it's six six characters now. Oh, five characters. I forget. Six, yeah. <laughs> it's six. Six mm. characters. So, uh, so that, you, that's well, as, yeah. Um, uh, so, which which is 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 less bad, I suppose, than four. But uh, it's it's mm. still. You know, still not the easy, not the the best thing to have to type in every time you want to pick up your phone. Now, I think I think if um, I, I'm more concerned about the 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 ability to use it, uh, you know, uh, to be honest, than I, uh, you know, to and it and it actually working. So if it doesn't work with a mask, well, hmm, hmm, doesn't work with a mask. Then no mask. <laughs> oh, let's not go there. <laughs> let's not go there. Oh, no, so just uh, kidding, please. Just kidding. Well, actually, to, so, so to be fair, in this country at the moment, you have to wear masks in public places. But of course, you don't have to in private. And if you're in a, you, know, you, you shouldn't be needing necessarily to, you shouldn't be playing with your phone. Because if you're in a public place, but yeah, let's say you're going to the shops or something like that to get something, you know, you shouldn't be touching your phone anyway, should you? Because the things you pick up at the shop might be dirty. So it's uh mm. yeah except of course then you need your phone to act pay because nobody takes cash anyway it's a very complex world we live <laughs> isn't in it? isn't it pay with yeah. one of these no no touch i don't have yeah, one of those that's what i do <laughs> <laughs> all so right just, let's let's move this let's move this over to the picks of the week i think let's um, do that let's i think, do that. I think we won't find a solution for the whole situation no but it's I interesting think, to hear I everybody's the, personal views though i i think the upshot is be afraid be very afraid. <laughs> yes, or just be young and not care about it because everybody's <laughs> going to be like that. Oh, so. that, yes. Mm. <laughs> <sighs> oh, okay, Kido. pick of the week. I'll dive in first then because I've got one that uh, I, I, I quite liked, which is uh, just brings us straight back to photography. It's actually a quote. My pick of the week this week is a quote attributed to uh, the, the legendary photographer, uh, Elliot Erwitt. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, somebody who, oh, well, I mean, I don't have the, the, the greatest of appreciation or knowledge, I should say. I do have appreciation. I don't have the greatest knowledge of all his work, but, but known for his sense of humor and his ability to, to observe and capture with the camera things that are humorous, especially in street photography. Um, his, the quote is simply this, um, technique won't compensate for an inability to notice. <laughs> <laughs> so i would like encourage that. us all as we get cameras everywhere <laughs> just to keep noticing keep our brains and our eyes switched on and keep noticing so keep that you are noticing um, those hidden cameras indeed <laughs> yes, you on you, the street. Yeah. <laughs> there you go that's my pick of the week all right i'll pick up the second pick of the week and it is a camera here's a picture of it it's called the eufy e-u-f-y um indoor cam 2k and it's the cheapest camera that integrates with Apple's home kit. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I do not want the 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 video that goes onto that camera to be on some company's cloud somewhere. Um if I and th- there comes the Apple privacy thing into play again. If I want that uh, video somewhere, I'd rather have it um in the Apple ecosystem. That's just me. But this is this is I mean this this thing does this thing does AI stuff. So it can detect people, it can detect pets, it can detect uh, vehicles. Um it can alert you to the three separately. It can um it can uh not look at pets, so it can ignore pets while it sees people and sends you a message or records a snippet of video and uh it's it's 40 bucks, which is really cheap yeah, so um yeah i'm i'm i have and i've mm. just received it today so okay. um there what we are use um, it for Who um you gonna spy on <laughs> well in fact i wanted to uh to to it's pointing outside in front of the house not to the neighbors just our part um and if some delivery person comes i get a message no matter where i am so Okay. I have I have information about that. It's pretty much a, uh, it's pretty much a smart motion detector. That's what it what I use it for. Mm. You there might capture go. some nice wildlife uh, unintentionally. Um, well, I, I haven't enabled pets. It's only it only looks for people. So if someone <laughs> if someone comes in with a lot of boxes, it might not be recognized as a as a person. I don't know. I don't know. So okay. there we go. Who's next? 
Like um, next? Sure. Um, I picked, um, I haven't downloaded this and I, I don't intend to, but it's called, you might Chris, it's called Hidden Camera Detector. There we go. Um, it's, it's an app. A, f- a free app. I don't know. Maybe there's obviously in-app It says purchases. in-app purchases. Yeah, yes. don't they all? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's number one spy cam finder, search your house, hotel, <laughs> changing rooms, networks, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and more uh-huh. with a hidden camera detector app. Does it use a camera? <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I probably would. Yeah. yeah. New personal privacy scanner. Could be interesting. And it has. I also found this other one, um, which I can't remember the name of, that allowed you to um, like uh, choose CCTV cameras in different locations and like um, control them. But oh, like, said, like 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 pass uh, password less uh, password free cameras out there. There's plenty yeah. of those. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, which I thought was a bit mad. But anyway. Well, other people's okay. cameras. Yes, like, uh, yeah. you know, you know, this this is what it's happens. Different. You buy one of these, and then some of those have default passwords, and people never change them. And uh, there's plenty of like stuff in in people's backyards, looking at their garages and very stuff. Very strange. Yeah, <laughs> very okay, very strange. Fair didn't, didn't sound very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I didn't I want to encourage anybody to download it. So I, I think it'd be I less popular than Quibi. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Quibi. Yeah, that's saying something. <laughs> it is indeed. Yeah. So, Jeremiah, you're... Um, in, in in our search for a privacy, uh, I'm just going to kind of put the, um, the s- final stamp on it, which is the technology <laughs> that's been... Um, developed now, which uh, is basically about your heartbeat being uh, a signature like um, a fingerprint, uh, but more. Um, And when you have sensitive microphones everywhere, it will pick up your heartbeat and send that to whoever wants it. So uh, I posted an article about that so that people can um, get even more paranoid. Do you know what that that I can I can believe I have I have some personal experience of that actually without giving away too much of my medical history, um, but uh, I I do have um, a, a slightly unusual heartbeat myself. Not 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 that is any uh, in any way indicative of any imminent failure of my heart or anything like that. Um, I, I had you know, complete all clear I was given. This was years and years ago. It was discovered just during a routine examination. Um, and 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 uh, when I spoke with the cardiologist at the time, I was told it was very common uh, that people would have you know slightly not not I don't know quite I don't quite, I don't know what the right word is, but but not yet yeah, yeah there, there's a lot of variation in people's heartbeats essentially, mm. um, and and this was picked up for me. It was followed up, and and I was declared perfectly normal, which is. Re- Good. reassuring questionable <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, okay my heart was declared perfectly normal <laughs> yes. um but but i can well imagine that that actually is is true and and that the yeah with the, with the correct processing you could yeah it, it, uh, whether or not how unique it would be whether you yeah you know, how, how would it be as unique as a fingerprint or as a 3d face scan or whatever i have no idea but i can understand how it could be different for people hmm interesting Okay. Like I said, privacy is a myth now. More paranoia to come. Anyway, <laughs> I think that should uh, be enough for today. Um, <laughs> uh, please, yeah, please, let's, let's end this dystopian episode. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I think we'll be back with more happy things in the yes. <laughs> next weeks. <laughs> so um, before we leave, just a little reminder, we are online at uh, TFOB Now on Twitter, at TFOB Now on Insta. And of course, our website is at thefutureofphotography.com. And uh, I think, um, yeah, that's it for today. Thanks, everyone, for being here. And until next time, bye-bye. 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 Bye. Bye.